this faster than this. And now, from the Bisco Bunker, Craig Garrity! Hi, everybody. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's great to be home. Excuse me while I slip out of this here. Oh, what a day. How's everybody doing out there? Well, I hope. Ah, oh, pardon me while I... Put this right in here. So. It's been a, a long day today. I hope I hope you've all have had a, a nice day at home or out in the streets or uh, wherever you live. I live here. Oh uh, yeah, with my wife, my wife Maureen. She lives here as well. Uh, it was she insisted on a two bedroom. Uh, his and hers, she said. Uh, it's working out great, though. Pardon me. As we all know, when you get in from being out in the streets, you got to wash up. So let's take a walk over to the sink, would you? We spared no expense here on the set today. We've got an actual running sink. We really don't know whose apartment this is. So if somebody breaks in in the middle of it and starts yelling at us, you'll understand. Linda Morlock asks, Maureen, why is your kitchen flipped? Well, because we have such a large budget. I was able to get a construction crew in here last night, and I just didn't like the way things looked on that wall, so I put them on this wall, but I put the things from this wall up to that wall. So Linda, that's the answer to your question. Any other questions, folks, please type them in. Uh, we'll get to it. What are you making? Uh, you know what I really yeah. should have done when I was washing my hands with Sing Happy Birthday? 
we're supposed to sing happy birthday twice, especially today, because it's my brother Matt's birthday. First things first, we're going to make brother Matt's shepherd's pie. Now, he's not a religious brother. He's just one of my brothers. I have five. Uh, Matt is a chef, and uh, he's a great chef. Just, just ask him. And uh, we're also going to do uh, a Red Snapper Veracruzana uh, in honor of Cinco de Mayo, which hopefully there'll be a Cinco de Mayo this year. With leap year, obviously, it'll be Cinco de Six. So just keep that in mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, Cinco, Cinco de May. Cinco de Mayo. Uh, and again, leap year, so Thanksgiving will be on a Friday this year. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, you're too kind. All right, a couple of things that we got to get started first. Uh, back here, I've got a, a pot of water, and I've got a couple of cut-up potatoes in here. Uh, there's a lot of salt in there, which is good. We want very salty water. I'm going to get that started here. You want to put the volume up all the way on this. And again, just, just so you know, I have it. I don't want you to think that I don't have salt. I do. I clearly do. We'll put some salt in here. My oven has uh, the two inside knobs, which are like on set to blast or something, which tells me that they could have made all four of these be really good, but they decided, you know what? Let's just let's have two good ones. That's good enough for him. Who do they think they are? Don't get me started. Okay. The potatoes are coming to a boil. We're going to use those later because we're going to uh, mash those up and we're going to make some garlic mashed potatoes to top off the shepherd's pie that I'm making tonight. Here's an empty pot. You can tell it's empty because when I do this, nothing comes out. It's science, folks. It's just, just simple science. Uh, we need some garlic. I like to buy garlic in this jar. Now, if you're one of these people at home, raise your hand if you are. I won't be able to see it. Uh, who likes to buy the garlic, it's already chopped up, and it's in some sort of a liquid, comes in a little, little jar like that, throw it away. Throw it away. No one, it was packed in probably World War II or something like that. Uh, it tastes nasty. I think it's gasoline. I'm not even sure. But if you're one of those people, and I'm shaming you right now, I had to do it. You'll, you'll be better for it, I promise you. I promise you. So I get some garlic in here. We're going to make, as I said, a garlic mashed potatoes. So up here, I keep my extra large jug of olive oil. My wife got this on her honeymoon. She said it was great. <laughs> she sent postcards. She called from Italy, too. She said, Greg, the honeymoon's great. You should have been here. And I said, it's, it's great with a C. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get me started. Alexa, how are you tonight? Alexa, how are you tonight? I just worked out the ending to my latest story. That always feels nice. Okay, the next time I ask you a question, Alexa, just answer it. Don't make me ask twice. Can I get a turn over here? And the folks will see what I've got here. We have capabilities otherwise, but I'm just going to put this garlic on here at sort of like a lowish medium. What we're going to do is take this garlic and we're going to simmer it in the olive oil. There are many ways to make garlic mashed potatoes. You can take the garlic and uh, keep it keep it in the paper, cover it in olive oil, wrap it in tin foil, put it in your oven for a while. And then when it cools down, you take that olive oil, you uh, press the garlic out of each individual uh, piece of garlic paper, and it's a disaster. And you go, this just wasn't worth it. Do it this way, you'll still get great flavor, and you'll go, wow, that Craig, he's not just a handsome and rugged and, you know, above average height in some countries. Uh, he's also knows how to make garlic mashed potatoes. So that's going to work on a slow simmer. You don't, want a, you don't want some raging pot of hot oil sitting around. We have our potatoes, they're working as well. I have over here an electric frying pan. I'm gonna take this lid right off it for now. And 
my uh, my wife is going to grab me some chopped meat, which I have in the fridge. It's not a big favor, honey. Just do it, please. It's half lamb, half chopped meat. You see what I did was I had them grind them all up together at the butcher. Uh, I never thought the guy was a real butcher. I thought he was a hitman. His name was Sammy the Butcher. I didn't realize he actually sold meat. So what I've done here is cooked off some garlic and some onions already. And now I'm going to put this in here. It's getting hot, which is just exactly what we need. Somebody asked uh, a write-in question with regards to shepherd's pie. Where do you get shepherd meat? This is not made from a shepherd. Okay, I want to be very clear about that. It's just the, the name they would use because traditionally this dish would be made with lamb. And shepherds, you know, they walk around with lambs. So, when it's just chopped meat, people refer to it as cottage pie. But when there's lamb involved, and you don't have to use lamb if you're lamb sensitive or lamb intolerant. I know a lot of folks are lamb intolerant now. Uh, peanut allergies, lactose, lamb, lamb toast intolerance. <laughs> Cut it out. You're too much. Okay, so I'm going to let this chopped meat and lamb, I'm going to let it all break down, cook away. And I'm going to show you how easy this dish really is. My brother Matt showed me this dish, and I wrote all the directions down when he showed me because there's Guinness involved as well. So after we made it, we celebrated, and I forgot how to make it, so I had to refer to my notes. So right now, I'm just gonna let all that meat start to brown up. I'm gonna keep this lid on so you can still hear me. Chopped meat, 80-20, uh, so it'll be pretty fatty. It's gonna release uh, a little bit of liquid, that's okay. Uh, same with the lamb. So you might get a little too much liquid in there, you can just drain some of it out. What I'm going to do is leave my silicone spatula in there, and that'll keep releasing some some moisture as well. If I have it completely sealed, it's going to stay, stay in there just a little too much more. So where are we? We have chopped meat and lamb working, mashed potatoes are working, and I hear that my olive oil is bubbling. So I want to lower it a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to I don't want to boil it. I just want to let it simmer break down the garlic cloves, and then we're gonna put that into our mashed potatoes a little bit. So for now, that's all we have to do for shepherd's pie. Do we have any questions yet, honey? No questions. All right, last night someone asked a question, and I couldn't get to it. Why is it called the Block Island Seafood Company? Well, for nearly 20 years, I worked out in the Hamptons at a place called the Lobster Inn. And while I was, uh, Working in my acting career, the lobster inn was getting ready to close. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to work at a restaurant uh, like that ever again. So I had to come up with my own business. So I said, oh, I'll teach cooking demonstrations. I had never taught a cooking demonstration. Uh, but I made a website, so that's all I needed. And we're about 500 cooking demonstrations since. But Block Island Seafood Company, I needed a name for it. So my family and I, we've gone up there now for about 26 or 27 years consecutively. So I said, oh, Block Island Seafood Company. I made it up. It also sounded better than Rikers Island Seafood Company, I think. Huh? Stop it. That's too much. I do appreciate it, though. Thank you. Uh, now. UT says good evening, oh, big guy. Oh, my Uncle Tom sending in uh, best wishes. Good evening, big guy. How are you? Shepherd's Pie. It's and, working over here. And Grace McCluskey says... We have something just coming up from Grace McCluskey. Hold on, folks. Hi, Uncle Craig. It's Grace on my dad's Facebook, since only old people have Facebook. Because Love you. Because only old people have... Hey, don't say that. Don't say that old people have... Only old people use Facebook. Don't say that, honey. Because these people can hear that. All right? You know, I don't want to get anybody upset. Believe me. I know only old people are using Facebook. Oh. Oh, they can see that? Grace... That's not nice. I'm kidding. Young people use, are using the Facebook, too. 
Grace is, uh, you know, she's a high schooler, so she's a lot hipper than I am. What else? Any other questions, honey? Yeah, Brian Kissling, are the garlic cloves whole? They are whole, Brian. And I'm going to blend them up in a little, uh, a little later on. So my chopped meat is browning up quite nicely, and in a little bit I'll be able to drain some fat off of this. The best part about these nights are when I'm done and I go back to the green room and I have a bottle of champagne uh, and my wife comes out here to do all the dishes and things like that. Did I tell you that today's fantasy day? Maureen, you know this is the sink, right? You know how this works? <laughs> you have any idea? She's got no idea. All right, folks. So we're going to do this Veracruzana. As I said, a bit of a salute to my, uh, my Mexican friends and uh, my Mexican heritage. Maybe I'm part Mexican. I got recently my 23 and me back. It said 79% uh, Irish, 20% Wales, and 1% other. So maybe it's Mexican. I don't know. So let me go all the way up here to get this. Do you want to show this beautiful rack I put up? Nice camera work, honey. Nice job. <laughs> now, if I could do a pull-up, which I can't, I could do a pull-up on one of these. That's how sturdy they are. And as I say that, I notice one of the screws is coming loose. Maureen, you got a screw loose. <laughs> That's too much. That is too much. We have a question coming in. Yes. Uh, Frank Bonacci, what are you cooking the chopped meat in? In an electric frying pan, Frank. I think Frank may have been saying what kind of an oil I'm cooking it in. I had some residual olive oil in there, left over from left over from when I cooked up the garlic and the onions. And the reason I cooked the garlic and the onions first is so that they don't sit in the, the liquid that the meat produces and, and boil. I don't want to boil them right now. I wanted to get a little bit of a coat on the outside of them, which is exactly what I did. I removed them, put the leftover olive oil and obviously the fat from the, the fat that gets rendered from the beef and the lamb. That's what's really populating this, this frying pan. I'm going to lower that volume just a little bit. So over here, you saw, I, I got some I got some flame on there. Oh, that's hot. I know. It's okay, honey. It's fine. You want to get the medicine kit? <laughs> it's in the it's in the closet right under the iron. Oh, you wouldn't know where that is. Um, <laughs> now, I you know I joke around like that, but really, uh, I do. I joke around like that, but really. It's, my wife, she just sends it all the stuff out to the directory. Uh, oh. Someone wants to know where Mike Chapman, his wife Wendy Bennett, wants to know where's Larry. Larry, because of social distancing, I can't have him in the house. Also, Larry's a bit of a kleptomaniac. So uh, he comes in and leaves with stuff of mine. So that's why I can't have him here in person. It's really unfortunate, you know, because he's a nice guy, but, you know, between the. Uh, and, I'm not allowed to have brown here anymore. Uh, so let's get started. We're going to make this uh, codfish veracruzana. And I have, you saw, I got the, uh, I got this beautiful pan here, getting that nice and hot. And I'm going to start out with some, a couple cloves of garlic. I'm going to snatch those up. Sarah Swolfs is watching. Oh, Sarah Swolfs is watching. Hope you're doing well, Sarah. And also, uh, you're our first international viewer, Sarah, and maybe Bubba are watching from England. That's a different country. And we can subtitle this too, if you can't understand the language. I used to be a high school teacher, and we had a transfer student from England once. And one of my students in Queens said, oh my god, this guy, he's, he's something else. I said, yeah, he just moved to America a couple weeks ago. And my guy from Queen said to me, wow, he knows the he knows the language really well. So fast. 
True story. So what I did here, I took those garlic cloves. You were probably watching this. I smashed them with the side of my knife, and then I'll just get a little chop, chop, chop on them. Um, Brian Putri? Yes, Brian Elizabeth Sullivan. Why only one glove on? Because I don't need it. I don't need this. I'm not going to touch the food with this. And when I cook at home, I don't always wear gloves, but I'm going to cook something. I'm going to touch something hot. So that's why I really wanted to get the gloves on. But here I have this beautiful smashed up garlic, a little bit of olive oil, a lot of olive oil. I'm at about a medium heat here. So I got some garlic working. Now Veracruzana comes from Veracruz, which is a uh, it's a state in Mexico or a territory in Mexico. It's coastal. So here we would have something like Santa Barbara or the Hamptons or uh, Rhode Island. You know some of those beautiful places. Well, in Mexico on the coast is Veracruz. So what we're going to make tonight is a dish that you would have there, sort of typical of their style. So in America, we have, I would say New Orleans is the most particular city. I wasn't even close to the onion. Uh, New Orleans would be the city in America, I think, with the most unique cuisine. So. New York, we have a little bit of everything. We have Chinatown, we have uh, Little Italy, we have in Queens, uh, the best Korean food outside of Korea. We're all over the place. Uh, Whereas a city, as I said, like New Orleans, which on Thursday night, by the way, we'll be doing shrimp and grits. Come back and join us. That's gonna be on the uh, Block Island Seafood Company Facebook page. Veracruz in Mexico, their cuisine is, uh, a signature there would be some olives, some onions, capers, maybe a squeeze of lemon. And you might be thinking, geez, Craig, olives aren't native to the United States. No, they're not. They're not native to Mexico either. They're a European thing. But don't forget that Europeans weren't native to the New World either. So, one of the things there we have, as I said, I used to be a high school teacher. We talk a lot about cultural diffusion, something from Europe that would find its way here, something from here that would find its way to Europe, like the tomato, indigenous to North America, but not in Europe. Now, of course, you can find tomatoes there. Uh, a lot of hot tomatoes in Europe, as a matter of fact. <coughs> Maureen, question. Um, from Rich Zeidler. Yeah, Big Rich, Big Rich from Lobster Inn. Bobby wants to know, what about cornbread? Uh, only on Sundays, Rich. Only on Sundays. So, I jump back here to my shepherd's pie. And I'm going to show you how beautiful it looks. While the onions and the garlic work over here. Let me toss that around a little bit. Did you get scared, Maureen? <laughs> no, not even a little bit? No. <laughs> don't try this at home, folks. You can cook all you want, but don't try some of these moves. All right, because I don't want somebody ripping a, a, a lap muscle or something like that and suing me. Um, Karen Grimes, where are your recipes listed down here? in Hilton Head with John and Cheryl. Great shrimp down here. Oh, go right to www.blockislandseafood.com, www.blockislandseafood.com. And the first section you'll see, there'll be uh, recipes for tonight. You might have to scroll to the left or to the right. Although I guess if you're going to the left or the right, it might not be a scroll. It might be more of a toggle. But www.blockislandseafood.com, that's www.blockislandseafood.com. Tomatoes are working. They look beautiful. I'm sorry, the onions and the garlic are working. Now, this is really important stuff. I want to get uh, some other ingredients. Yes? Um, Jeannie O'Hara. Hi, Craig. The group from Bayport says hello. Hello, Janae. How are you? I can't hear you. 
I'm assuming you said you're great now that you can see me. <laughs> oh gosh. Remind me later on. We'll do a uh, we'll do a commercial later on, honey. Okay, nice little break. Jim Phillips just asked about Jim Phillips. He want Jim only watches for the commercials. Alright, now. Sometimes you'll get uh, a lot of liquid out of your out of your uh, your beef and your lamb. Sometimes you won't. Tonight's one of those occasions where we didn't get a lot of liquid, so that's fine. What I want to do now is your recipe probably calls for some tomato paste. We're going to finish off this shepherd's pie. We're going to keep getting that moving. Maureen, you have a question? Uh, Rich Delauri, what's your favorite dish to make? Oh, linguine and white clam sauce. Hands down, that's going to be Thursday night. And that's not a plug. That's just the truth. Uh, I like to go out and hunt and kill my own clams if need be. Uh, I prefer that. My second favorite dish to make would be uh, New England clam chowder. I love to make that dish. I love to make it. I love to eat it. And honestly, whatever my wife, whenever she wants me to make her dinner, that's probably the thing I love to make the most. Making another hero sandwich. Oh gosh. Okay. So uh, let's see. We've got we've got our onions and our garlic. We're gonna put that in. You might hear some sizzling out there. I hope you do. Here's my onions and my garlic that I had cooked up earlier, and now that's going in. Normally I cook at the stove. I really do. But tonight, tonight is kind of special. I want to thank the Blue Point Library, the Blue Point Bayport Library, for doing this. When this pandemic started, they were the first library to call me and start to figure out ways that we could uh, work through this together. I'll get to that in a moment. Here's some tomato paste. Sometimes it comes in a little can, I'll show you. Sometimes it comes in a can like that. And what you do at home is you open the top, then you take out your tablespoon or two, and then you put a piece of saran wrap on top with a rubber band. And you put it in the refrigerator door, thinking, I'm going to use that again. But you won't. And then you throw it out six months later. If you're one of those people, and I know we all are, you can get this nice tube of tomato paste. I'm going to put this right in the middle of this. This is really deep, deep, rich flavor. It's like tomatoes on steroids. Steroids. Onions are working really nice. Honey, can you come in for a shot of this? Can you see the redness here? Wow, that's okay. Sorry, everybody. That's all right. Just hold it. Can you still see the <laughs> She's laughing. Yes. Okay. I'm going to put a little more of that. I don't know what she's laughing at. She likes to laugh, my wife. I don't want to do this. You're doing great, honey. You probably shouldn't have had so much alcohol ahead of time. Now you're probably regretting that. Just because you're off from work doesn't mean, you know, every day's a party. Okay, you see this here, folks? This is tomato paste, and it's starting, as you can see, it's starting to burn a little bit right to the, right to the pan, which is exactly what we want. For some of you, burning it to the pan is not going to be a problem. Step back. Now, we're going to do something that's called a pincet. We're burning that tomato paste into the pan, get extra flavor out of it. There's a lot of sugar in there. So when that sugar gets heated up, it starts to caramelize, boom. Now we start to work it into the beef and the lamb. But you want to burn it first. Maureen, in the refrigerator, can you grab me two cans of Guinness?
Um, Aubrey Prisco, how much paste would you use? Uh, about eight inches. A couple of tables, a couple of teaspoons. Okay, now. Pardon me. We have some Guinness here. It's very important. Now, I'm doubling your recipe. Your recipe calls for eight ounces of Guinness. This is 16 ounces. Be very careful with the way you pour it. It will have an effect on it. And then leave a little. Leave, a, leave just a little. But as far as this is concerned, we start taking the Guinness. And Maureen, maybe we can get a shot of this again, holding on really tightly to the camera this time. Are you nervous? You don't want to do it? <laughs> Give it a shot. No one here will even know. There's nobody watching, I promise. Just move the camera over and drop it in here. I want to show the folks this beautiful image of burnness that I have cooking. Can you see this? Can you see that in the camera? Can you see that at home? Yeah, I see the comments. I can't. Okay, that looks great. Go back to uh, position one. Oh, actually, leave it right there. And I'm going to show them this. That bubbling is what you want to see. All right, you can go back. That bubbling, that's what you call deglazing the pan. All the sugars from that tomato, they came out, they stuck to the bottom of the pan, which is exactly what I asked you to do. We now deglaze them by putting in the Guinness. And that gets underneath, pulls out all the flavor, and this goes right in here. Adam Lane wants to know, can you use Peels beer instead of Guinness? You cannot use Peels. Don't use Peels because you're an adult now. Adam and I went to college together back when, you know, well, A, back when I had a college. Southampton College doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but you know what? How about this? Here's one to, to the fallen folks at Southampton College. Go Colonials. Happy birthday to my brother Matt, too. This is the most important part of this. Stop it. Honestly, that's too much. That's too kind. I do appreciate it, though. So, now I lower the uh, temperature just a little bit here. Our Guinness has pulled off all that stuff off the bottom, which is what we wanted. We're getting a lot of flavor in here now. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. That's in there. Uh, we got to take a little bit of rosemary. Do I have any rosemary? I have some chopped rosemary right here. That's going to go in. Some beef stock brought to you by Kitchen, kitchen Basics. Basically, it's a kitchen. And we need, I think we need, oh, a couple ounces of this. We need that many ounces of that. That's exactly how many ounces we need. Maybe just a little bit more. Now we've got this sort of soupy, soupy uh, little mess going on here. But don't don't worry, it's okay. We're gonna tighten that up too. So you'll see here how soupy it is. That's just fine. Let's let's let the beef stock and the Guinness. Let's let that soup up a little bit, and then we're gonna tighten that up in just a little bit. Let me see if I've missed any ingredients for that. I don't think so. Let's get back to Vera Cruzana. Question, honey, you look nervous. Why are you, I'm the one not wearing pants. Why are you nervous? Okay, so this Vera Cruzana, the onions are uh, cooked basically, the garlic has been cooked. Let's get a couple of the items in there. Very important here, the jalapeno. 
perhaps you've had this on top of a taco, uh, or you've had a uh, jalapeno popper as well. Now I'm going to show you something inside of the, see that? And here, those are the seeds. Those are the ribs and the seeds. That's where it's really hot. This outer part is hot, but not as hot as this. So my brother Matt, it's his birthday. He used to have this thing called Dave's Insanity Sauce. It was, boy, it was insane. Now you may have noticed my cutting board moving, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do here is just get down an extra wet paper towel, and this is going to help me secure it a little better. So, because we don't want to really burn people up too much, I'm going to take the ribs and the seeds out of this. So as I was saying, my brother Matt, because it's his birthday, I should give you a Matt story. As I said, he's a chef, and uh, him and a buddy were out watching a World Series game. Enjoying the game like this the whole time. And then some giant behemoth of a man, probably 5'9", stood right in front of him. And they're like, hey guy, watching the game. He goes, well, so am I. So now they're behind this guy. So what Matt does is, goes into his bag of tricks, he pulls out the jar of Dave's Insanity Sauce. He put it right on the gentleman's pocket. And throughout the night when the man got money and things like that, he touched his face. Next thing you know, he's bowling crying. He's, he thinks someone has maced him. Because that's what they put in mace. They put peppers like this. Ghost peppers and Carolina Reaper peppers uh, and things like that. And Julius peppers uh, and Dr. Peppers. Anyway, that's a true story. So be careful when you try to think you're going to jump in front of somebody like that. So Brian asked earlier, Craig, why are you wearing a glove? That's why I'm wearing a glove. Because when you touch the inside of the jalapeno, it can get pretty spicy. Now later on, when Maureen asks me to do her hair before she goes to bed, uh, whatever I have to do for her, I can't, I can't be touching her cheek with a handful of jalapeno pepper oil. She'll be burning up. Can't have it, won't have it. So that's why. Also remember, uh, you don't want to have too much of this stuff. You know, if you do, you got to be careful. It, uh, it can burn it up for you. Uh, you might have to put the toilet paper in the freezer. Now, uh, a couple other items are going to go in here. I got a little tomato sauce. That goes right in to the Veracruzana. Uh, we have some capers. We always had capers in the house for some reason. My mother is a great cook. Or really, she's a great cook. She instilled in us to have capers at all times in our house, and we did. I don't. I was the only kid in school who had a peanut butter and jelly and caper sandwich. So caper is going in. The caper again. That's a European thing. They grow on trees in Europe, and uh, almost like olives would. And they're berries, and then those berries they get brined, and uh, that's how we get the caper berry. Here we have some olives, and I'm just going to slice these up. Any way you want is fine, pardon me. You want to get really particular and have them all look the same. You want to buy chopped olives? That's fine. I have here uh, some pitted queen olives because we are in Queens. This is the galactic headquarters of the Block Island Seafood Company. So I was saying before, Blue Point Library, when this pandemic is breaking, they're great and fearless leader, Mike Firestone, calls me and says, hey, just a heads up, we have some jobs lined up with you. I don't know how this is going to shake out. But I want you to know that we're not going to leave you hanging. And he said, no matter what we have to do, I want to make sure that you're, that you're looked after uh, and that we hold up our end of the deal and things like that. I said, Mike, you really don't have to do that. Obviously, I didn't mean that. You know, I was just saying that to be polite. But uh, my hat's off to the Blue Point. Bayport Public Library, who's sponsoring tonight, and to all of my friends out there, uh, I'll be seeing you soon in person. I think in May I'll be back in person. Uh, and I'm obviously a lot, you know, more handsome in person, too. <laughs> Let's see. Olives are going to go in. Chopped up wonderfully. Where is my, uh, I'm going to lower the lower that a touch. We're getting a nice simmer going here, which is exactly what we want. 
I was looking for the spatula. It was in the pan. Oh. Alexa, what would you say is your favorite thing about me? Here's something I found on the web. According to the Forgotten, my favorite thing is it being an easy to use item in a large catalog. No, Alexa, what is your favorite thing about me? Alexa, what is your favorite thing about me? I didn't ask about anybody else. Alexa, I'm talking to you. We have people watching. Please, behave. Alexa, behave yourself. Behave yourself by verifying out of Miss Williams is an American thoroughbred race horse. All right, now Maureen is going to. I'm not quite sure how Alexa, I'm I'm talking now. Please, you had your chance. Alexa, stop it! Stop it! Alexa, I'm talking. Sorry, now, I'm not sure. Alexa, stop interrupting me, please. So can I have the computer, honey? We'll uh, show the folks a uh, commercial because, you know, we got to pay the bills here. Will you ask if everybody's connection is good? How's everybody's connection out there? Just start commenting. What's that? Just start, start commenting. Me? No, if it's good. Oh, start commenting if you can, if the connection is good out there. Are you, are you nervous that it's not? I was skipping on my phone. Okay. Is it up and running? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, comments is good. Okay. That's good. Hmm? All right. Now, let's see what everybody brought up, what it feels like. Run soft. Who wants to go first? Darius. Oh, it's still warm. Francisco, what do we have here, huh? Oh, soft drink. But when do you see a hard one? Is that a real cloud, Corey? A plus. Nobody else? Harry? You didn't bring anything in? Nothing, huh? All right. What did you bring in? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Ah, I don't know, Francisco. Now you tell me. <laughs> Good one, Dean. Anybody else want to take a shot at the Dean? Hey, this is Tough Tony Carano for Tough Tony Self Defense Dojo. Listen up. Are you tired of getting picked on without the answer? Well, come on down to the dojo for a few self-defense lessons. You'll learn some of our patented techniques to defend yourself and finally feel great about yourself. I can't promise you that you look like me or be able to devastate people like I can, but you won't be such a loser anymore either. Summer is coming, and the chicks will be looking for protection. Are you man enough to provide it? Do yourself a favor and sign up for classes now. I'm Tom Tony Carrado, and I wrote this message. <laughs> Oh, that's very kind of you, folks. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Hey, that's don't be don't be nasty. All right, my Veritrizana is coming together quite nicely. I want to get a bay leaf in there. Perhaps you got this when 25 years ago when you bought your spice rack and you've never used the bay leaf. They last forever. They're in bomb shelters. They're they're they last forever. Uh, some oregano, or as my cousin Donald in England says, oregano. A dash of that, and some tomatoes, so we're going to call it a day on that. What's your question, honey? You look nervous. Uh, Jerry Tierney Hamilton, is this live right now? I'm confused, as usual. It is live, Jerry. What I just said has now gone into the atmosphere and into the Wi-Fi through my outlets and is now roughly reaching your house. Welcome. I was saying, you know, now that Maureen's home a lot, uh, she says, I want to do some laundry. Show me where the laundry room is. We've lived here for almost a year. She, anyway, she did her first load of laundry the other day. These were my golf pants, so. Thanks a lot, honey. 
tomatoes here. Now I said in your recipe that we want to de-seed them. That's just how I do it. I just sort of roll on the outside. Rough chop is fine. That'll work just fine. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Lorraine Morrissey. Why do you have to portray her voice like that? That's the way she sounds, Lorraine. That's the beautiful, soothing voice I hear when she calls my name. Craig, give me a sandwich. It's music to my ears. It gotta be. Or let's be honest. I take it back. Vera Cruzana, a salute to Mexico. Keith Hernandez. His nickname was Mex. How about that? Nice one, Carmen. I appreciate that. So I have here these chopped up tomatoes, and they're going to give off a little more moisture. Right into the pan for the Veracruzana sauce. I got some of these little tomatoes, too. I don't know. I had them, bought them months ago, and I just found them in my glove compartment. So why not use them, right? That's going to go in there. And now you'll see all these beautiful colors, the greens, the reds, the whites from the, uh, the whites from the onion. Alrighty, let's see if our potatoes are soft. They should be. Pretty soft. That's good. We're almost done. Oh, I hate to leave everybody. I hate to have you guys leave, but Maureen's giving me the look whenever I have company. She's like, how long are they staying for? Even when it's just me, she asks me that all the time. You sleeping over? I live here. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, we almost made it two years. Uh, so, my beautiful shepherd's pie is over here, and we boiled up pretty much boiled up all the broth and the and the Guinness. The next thing we need to do, as I mentioned, is that we're going to thicken this, thicken this up, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. With a, we don't do a lot of technique here at the Black Island Seafood Company, Bisco Bunker shows. It's our second show. Uh, and I really don't have a lot of technique. As I mentioned, my brother Matt is the chef. I'm, I'm more of a dancer, probably. Uh, not officially trained as a dancer, but I picked up most of it just on my own. Uh, we have some pieces of butter here. They're not soft, soft, but they're fairly soft. And I'll wear a, uh, a glove for this one too. So if you make a roux, that's when you heat up butter and you put flour into it, or any fat could be could be lard, could be Crisco. Uh, when you add butter and flour together, as I said, you're making something that's called a roux when you heat it. In this case, I'm just going to put the flour and the butter in without cooking it. It's called a bel magnet. Bel magnet. Bel, uh, French is, uh, means butter. And in French, magnet means also magnet. So you learn more than just cooking here. So I've got this flour here combined with the fat. I'm going to drop it right in here. And I'll do one or two of these, and this is how we're going to thicken it up. You can also thicken it up with a slurry, which is a combination of cornstarch and some cold water. And the starch gets in there, it hits the heat, thickens things, thickens things up quite nicely. Just work that in. You don't want it to be uh, totally without juice. It's got to have some some juice, but. You're not trying to make something that's uh, too viscous either. You want to you want to have something that's going to be good and juicy and tasty. This is going to be the best shepherd's pie I've ever made. 
on camera. Okay, honey, you okay? Yeah. But you look nervous. Jim Phillips wants to know if you'll add extra butter for Rich. Oh, yeah, Big Jim chiming in from Erskine Lakes, New York. Uh, yes, we will be putting in some extra, it's Jersey, uh, some extra butter for our buddy Rich, who's down in uh, North Carolina. Rich, this one's for you. My buddy Jim is a teacher, and he called me the other day complaining about all this work from home, uh, school from home, having to teach his kid. And I said, but aren't you a teacher? Shouldn't this come easy to you? Uh, so, I don't know if he's a bad teacher or what, but that should be the easy part, I would think, for him. So last pieces of butter going in. As I say, this is going to thicken up really, really nice. How was everybody St. Patrick's Day? It was a little bit of a letdown this year, I guess, but we'll get them next year. We'll be back. All right, so this has gotten thickened up just, just perfectly. I have some... Uh, peas and carrots here, or carrots and peas, depends on how you look at it. Put those right in. Frozen peas and carrots, you're totally fine. So as I was saying, this is really considered sort of peasant food. Uh, when a shepherd, and I would imagine they were the bad shepherds, because those were the ones whose sheep were dying. Uh, they were like, oh my god, the sheep is dead, what are we going to do with it? Let's make a pie out of it which I really admire that. That's very nice. Uh, if it was all beef, we would call it a cottage pie. But this is something that, it doesn't have to be peas and carrots. It could be peas, carrots, onions. You could uh, sneak some little bits of broccoli in here, which is what I have to do with my wife. She has no idea the, the green stuff that I put in her food. But I do make her eat vegetables out without her knowing it. Uh, you could put uh, some corn niblets in here as well. Anything that would be laying around, somebody would be able to put in here and sort of stretch out a meal. Now, lastly, finish off our very cruzana as our night approaches and ending soon. I'm going to miss you guys. But Maureen said that if anybody wants to call the house at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, it's totally fine. We're open for, uh, we're open 24 hours a day. This here is just about done. So I want to put a little bit of parsley, a little bit of cilantro. This is very important stuff. Here's parsley. More often than not, you will use a lot of parsley. You don't always need this much cilantro. So this is really important. If you're at the supermarket and you just need a little cilantro, just take a little cilantro and put it right into the parsley, okay? They don't know. They'll never know. These kids, they're all high on dope. They won't know. Go up, self-checkout, and that's how you can get as much free, par uh, free cilantro as you like. But we're going to finish off this Veracruz with a little bit of cilantro. And I'm going to put that in at the end. We put the parsley and the cilantro in too early. You can use the stems too if you like. I'm just not going to. If you put it in too early, it cooks up a little slimy, and it doesn't look very nice. And I'm all about appearances. So I keep myself in such great shape. Fresh cilantro, a little bit of fresh parsley here. That's gonna work out great. <sighs> Time to clean up. Maureen! No, I'll get it. I'll, oh, okay, I'll get it. I'm sorry. I think I have a nice clean board there. But I like to leave a little greenery so that you know I've been working. 
So last thing I want to do here is a just pan sear a little fish. This is my cousin Judy's cast iron frying pan. She doesn't know that I have it. Maybe she knows now. But I took it. I didn't think she was using it enough, so I took it. When you want to pan sear a piece of fish, you got to get it nice and hot. You got to have the you got to have the pan good and hot. Here's a here's a nice little piece of fish. We're gonna do skin side down. Maureen's totally freaking out right now because she just doesn't like fish. And she married a guy who is the corporate giant president of the Block Island Seafood Company. The pan is hot. I add a little bit of olive oil to that pan. Here's my fish. It's dry. I take some salt and pepper. I really can't do this at the library often because it's, it gets a little smoky. But maybe you hear something in the back, or you see my uh, exhaust fan there. That's the way we do it in Queens. You put the exhaust fan up here. This is also my fire escape, which also doubles as a refrigerator in the cooler months. Rich DeLowry, why skin side down? Because that's what's going to crisp up in the pan. We want to get the skin into the pan and the flesh part up. The oil gets nice and hot. When you start to see the oil start to smoke, that's when you know it's done. Do you feel okay, Maureen? She's really worried about this fish. This is pretty much done. Keep that on a simmer. And uh, let's see, maybe I'll just take a piece of parsley, see if that, I see that the parsley starts to crackle right away in the olive oil. And in goes into the pan. You might be able to hear that. I hope you can hear that. You can step away more in. See, what happens here is you might even be able to see that the fish is released from the pan. Kevin Ludwig wants to know, can you use a non-stick pan to cook the fish? Absolutely, you can use a non-stick pan. Same concept. Get the, get the pan good and hot. Brad Re Reese wants, how big was the snapper? Uh, between me and you, Brad, see, Brad's a captain. So pretty soon we're going to become into the warmer months. Brad is the captain of a Someday Came Charters out of Hampton Bays. I highly, highly recommend Captain Brad and Someday Came Charters. That's the name of his boat. He's a great fisherman. Very, very great captain. He's also very safe. I'm throwing out a lot of very, very greats. He's miraculous. He's, he's awesome. Terrific. Fantastic. Uh, that, Brad, was between me and you. A little bit of red perch. Slim pickings these days, if you know what I mean. Uh, but any, you don't have to use a, a fish with skin on it. You cannot use tilapia. If I find out that you're using tilapia for this recipe, I will come to the house and I will smack it. I will smash it. I am telling you right now, I will smash it. You're not allowed to use tilapia or any of these other lab fish that no one ever heard of 10, 15 years ago. I don't know anyone who's ever caught a tilapia. Uh, anyway. You can use a fish with a skin or not. If you want to make this dish with cod, which is the recipe we have on www.blockislandsuba.com, that's not going to have uh, skin on it. So same concept. Salt and pepper on the flesh. Put it down. You're going to get a nice crust. But when you put it in the oven, which is what I'm going to do right now, the other trick is, does it release from the pan very easy? And it does. That's, that's all I needed to know. John Walsh wants to know how my class was the other night. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Into the pan. She did great. Maureen is, uh, Maureen is pursuing a master's degree. And I mentioned this the other night when she first said to me, you know, honey, I'm thinking about maybe 
going back to school to get a master's degree. I said, you'll go away? And she said, well, no, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe going to Columbia. And I said, Bogota? No, Manhattan, she said. So my wife is uh, really uh, quite smart. Uh, she's in Ivy League school now. So John, her school went great. She's doing fantastic. Uh, she's dorming up there, which is really, it's a nice relief for me around here. Uh, but I still make her her lunch and things like that, send her up to school. So as I was saying about that fish, if you go to get the fish off the pan and it's not moving, just leave the heat on. Eventually, the heat is going to make the fish release from the pan. Same concept when you're grilling. Pretty soon we'll all be grilling. Men especially love to do this. Turn the grill on, put a piece of beef on it, and then start touching it and jabbing it. They're always trying to play with their meat. Be careful. You need a lot of heat on the grill, on the pan. That is what's gonna keep the fish from sticking. And then you wind up like doing this. Don't do that. Be patient. Get the grill on for 15, 20 minutes. Let it get ripping hot. And then put the proteins on. Same with your pan here. Now, Maureen, any other questions? No. Okay, that's good. You know, that's that's good right now. So last thing I want to do is uh, just make these mashed potatoes. And then we can all go home. What's the matter, Maureen? So are they. So are they. You're home too. How about that? Um, question from Joe. When is the next show? Thursday. We have no sponsor on Thursday. It's just going to be the Block Island Seafood Company. That's me because I have a t-shirt. And that's the night we'll be doing the linguine with white clam sauce and the shrimp and grits. Uh, salute to... I'm going to put a little of this pasta water right in here. Or potato water. Thin it out. Why not? So I'm going to just take this, that's okay, and I'm going to put my potatoes down. For anyone who uh, doesn't know, this is called a trivet. My mother would be going crazy if she... She's watching. Oh, my mom is watching. Hey, She's mom, how are you? She's so proud of the fact that I know to call that a trivet. My mother has, talk, has really, really trained me well. She truly has. So I have my, uh, my trivet here. I'm just gonna make these potatoes, these mashed potatoes, right in here. Maureen, would you be a lamb? And uh, grab me some, oh, some heavy cream maybe, and uh, that should do it, some heavy cream. I have some softened butter over here already. Sure, thank you. So mom, is this enough butter? How about this, Mom? Is that enough? No. That's, what, well, that's, that's it, Mom. No more after that. Put a little butter in there. Now, if we need butter, we need some... We're going to use a little bit of heavy cream. You could use whole milk is fine, too. Some salt. We want to be able to get the... Uh, we want to be able to get the potatoes to crisp up a little. And in order to get the potatoes to crisp up, we need some fat in there. So we have butter, we have some heavy cream. I also have over here, I think, some garlic cloves. Do I not, Maureen? Your mom says never enough butter. Never enough butter. Thank you, mom. So I burnt up my garlic cloves, which is okay. Just so you can see, because I was chatting with you folks, I burnt them up a little bit. So I'm not going to blend them, but you could blend them up and make like a garlic paste out of them. And then you put that garlic paste right in here. But what I do have is, guaranteed, I have some garlic oil. So I'm going to put some of this garlic oil right in here. Uh, Maury Schneider, would Thursday's food be available for pickup for any day? Uh, none of the food is available for pickup, Maura. I appreciate you asking, but you live in Connecticut, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, I don't like to really talk about it because we're here doing this tonight under such difficult circumstances. But the Block Island Seafood Company, among uh, 50, 60 cooking demonstrations per year throughout Nassau 
and Suffolk County libraries. Uh, we do cooking demonstrations throughout New York City as well. But we cater a lot of parties. Uh, we're big on the Catholic set. Christings, communions, uh, confirmations, you name it, graduation parties. But we, we cover all religions as well. Uh, but in all sincerity, we do cater. We, we do a lot of catering. I think our menu is available at www.blockislandseafood.com. Are your future live shows listed on your Block Island page? Yes, I've been posting them. As of now, we have two more live shows coming up. We have a Thursday night, tomorrow night, and then we have next Monday. And I'll keep posting. Go slow. Wow, this thing's got a lot of power, Maureen. Did you know that? <laughs> Just a dash more cream. Hold it right there. You can't see in the sink, can you? Can you see in the sink? I've been putting stuff in here for you to do later. Beautiful mashed potato. Let me taste them. They're incredible. They're beautiful and salty. Oh my gosh, they're great. <laughs> Sarah Swoff's Johnny Should Do says, I would have hand mashed those. Ah, oh, my cousin Johnny Should Do, all the way from England. You know what you should do? People love being told what they should do. People absolutely love it. No one loves being told what to do. No one. All right, last but not least. You can serve this in several ways. Here's a beautiful La Crusade that, uh, again, also was stolen from my, my cousin Judy. Sorry, Judy. I don't really steal these things. It's just that when she's not looking, I take them. I don't know if that qualifies as stealing. Uh, now, you want to take out your shepherd's pie, just like this. Just so the folks can see this at home, honey. Can they see this right here? Now, I do have a uh, what's called a Foley mill or a food mill. I don't know why it's called also a Foley mill, but I have one of those that my mother gave me many years ago. And that's a great way to mash potatoes as well, if you were to do them by hand. So I lay this out. Probably have too much in here, but that's okay. Cover that up. As I said, we want to get a little bit of flame on this. Shepherd's pie does not have to look pretty. It is a rustic dish. It is a peasant dish. It was not made for it was not made for uh, you know for a beauty pageant, and that's okay. So work that around. Just kind of cover it up a little bit. And you're gonna say, "Oh my God, Craig, that was really awesome. That was so beautiful. Look at how good that looks. I'm gonna put it under the broiler." Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Thank you. So I have here uh, just a beautiful dish. My wife's a hot dish, too. <laughs> oh. Did I 
say that right, honey? Because mm -hmm. I know you, might. you wanted me to get a couple of those in there tonight. Beautiful. Everything's popping. Put this down. If you want to have some rice, you can. Now, for me, I'm going to put this down like this. And I'm going to put the fish on top of it. If we put this on top of the fish, we're going to lose the fact that we had crisped up that fish so beautifully. Mm. Oh, Aunt Anne's on. Hi, Aunt Anne. So I'll just sort of let that rest just like that. And then this really upsets Maureen when I do that. I like to put parsley on things. I feel like if you've gone to the trouble of making dinner, why not finish it and make it look beautiful? Like you were out at the restaurant. Um, Maureen doesn't like a lot of green stuff on her food, so it freaks her out. But I want to go the extra mile for her. So I put it on her dinner and Cheerios, whatever. Uh, but that would be the... The Vera Cruzana, and as I said, if you wanted to accompany this with some rice or something like that, you're welcome to. This skin is very, very crispy, and you'll have a real nice mixture. You can put a squeeze of lemon in there as well, get some acid to work. Well, you got enough acid with the... Alexa, stop it! I'm talking! You have enough acid with uh, the tomatoes, probably. So that looks like it's done. Let's see if we have uh, some color on the shepherd's pie. John Walsh, I know you like the shepherd's pie. You Bronx guys. Oh my God, how much shepherd's pie did you eat as a kid? Let's take a look. Ah, oh, we're moments away. I can see it starting to get brown. So let me take this as an opportunity to uh, wish my brother Matt a very happy birthday. Matt, thanks for showing everybody how to make shepherd's pie. Uh, you weren't here tonight. It would have been nice if you were though. But I did it all on my own. I'd like to thank my wife, my beautiful, lovely wife, who has a gorgeous voice. She doesn't sound like that, Tim! <laughs> Only to my ears does she sound like that. I want to really thank the Blue Point Bateport Library. Uh, you made tonight possible. Thank you very much for many years now of continued support. Uh, the people of Bayport, uh, Bayport and Blue Point, I really appreciate you guys coming out. We do 40 people at a time at the library, but sometimes they'll have a wait list of up to 50 or 60 people. So I know not everybody gets to get in, so at least tonight, some of you get to see it this way. Uh, and anybody else I should thank, honey? Make sure you wash your hands a lot. Uh, should I give out my brother Matt's phone number in case they want to call him? Let's take a look here, honey. Ooh. Uh, every now and then, even a blind squirrel gets a nut. Can you see that, honey? Mm -hmm. You see how beautiful it is? Mm -hmm. So this is the shepherd's pie. Maybe we could, uh, I don't know, honey, maybe you can get a nice little uh, camera shot here. You want to go for another one of your beautiful camera shots? <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, because it's a four leaf clover. There you go. Four leaf clover. Sounds good? All right, we'll be seeing you. If you have any questions, you can email, of course. The email address is on the website, craig at blockislandseafood.com. The website, www.blockislandseafood.com. Stay safe, stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands, uh, and let's look after each other. Good night, everybody. Sorry? Hit the finish, Hit the finish button, honey, yeah.